It's been a real privilege for me to be crew aboard Fiona, um, and I know that you're you're looking for crew for the uh, for your next legs, including your including your Atlantic crossing. Um, yeah, I'm always looking for crew. Yeah, what's that like? What What are you looking for in crew? And uh, I need somebody with a good attitude that wants to be on the boat, that likes sailing. Yeah. Uh, they don't have to know a great deal about sailing. I'd like them to have some experience, of course. And also, importantly, they shouldn't get seasick, at least for more than a day. Because <laughs> that just makes <laughs> life tougher for me. <laughs> uh, so you've had so. some... Uh, God, in all your... Uh, in all of your voyages, uh, over 250,000 miles, I'm sure you've had all kinds of crew oh. aboard, good Yeah, I wrote an article once called Cruising Cruise, and that was written about 15 to 20 years ago. I've had some interesting people. It's, it's a way of getting to meet uh, the eccentrics of the world. <laughs> <laughs> How many crew do you like to have when you... Two crew and me is a good number, three good number that means the watch keeping is on average eight hours a day each split up huh. we generally do two hour watches from eight in the evenings late in the morning yep and then three hour watches during the eight to eight period during the daylight yeah and that way you can you can if you want get six hours continuous sleep while two people are doing the other watches um, another thing is that when you're offshore most people don't realize this but you can pick your own time uh, I always make sure that sunset occurs about eight o'clock in the evening <laughs> by setting the ship's clock oh. one, and, and that way all the washing up and dinner is out of the way huh. and then the night watches begin with night so wow. it's, it's real nice to be able to have that power to set the clock to whatever you want that's interesting <laughs> I've never heard of that before wow but you... I've done the trip that I'm talking about for the rest of this uh, cruise from yeah. uh, Portugal to the Caribbean and home I've done it a couple of times and um, We'll have nearly nice sailing. We'll, um, it's mm. possible that we might get some heavy weather as far south as the Canaries. So we, we got, nowadays, with the, with the digitized weather, you can try and avoid that much better than I used yeah. to. And um, uh, from then on, you've got the trade winds yeah. uh, and um, uh, the weather in Brazil, if anything, is too hot rather than too cold. Yep. And, uh, and then you've got the Caribbean in, uh, in the spring. I'll yep. be in the Caribbean by February, March. And... Uh, that's great, you know, a lot of the, the hordes have gone, you know, that many charter boats as they normally are, and um, that should be a, a, a great cruise. I think right. I've got something like six weeks to get from Tobago to Puerto Rico, so wow. that's going to be pretty leisurely cruising by my standards. Wow. Because <laughs> normally I average about 2,000 miles a month, mm -hmm. and so uh, to go only a few hundred miles in six weeks, that's going to be... A bit of real old. A lot of cruise. walking around on shore. Yeah, well, you do that. You <laughs> don't use your legs much. What do you like crew to bring <laughs> when uh, when they come aboard? What do you do? You want them to have? It, a lot depends, of course, on whether we're going to high latitudes or not. You know, obviously, if we're going to high latitudes and plenty of warm clothes and yeah. sleeping bag, that sort of thing. Uh, obviously, foul weather gear. Uh, for the rest of this trip. Uh, which is what I think the Germans call the barefoot route. It's pretty mm. easy sailing, you know, not very cold. They just need a light sleeping bag, some light fell weather gear, and uh, a good attitude. Good attitude, that's the most important thing. It yeah, it is, like. definitely, yeah. yeah.